Hi, this is David. I'm here from ConcertBlogger.com. We're here with Quincy Mumford of Quincy Mumford and the Reason Why. Uh, you have a new album that just came out, and uh, we're here to talk to you about it a little bit. Um, and uh, what's what you got going on? Uh, first question is, how did you find uh, a guitar in your hands for the first time as a child? It's about uh, nine years old, and I started playing guitar. I uh, just grew up listening to music. Um, my dad was a big reggae and uh, rock and roll fan, so I, I grew up listening to lots of music and started playing guitar when I was nine. When I was about 13, I started realizing that I had somewhat of a voice that I could try and do apply to some music and started writing some songs and uh, released my first album when I was uh, 16. 16, wow, that's crazy. How, how did you decide to become so serious about your music so early in life? I mean, most 16 year olds are worried about their PlayStation games or or chasing girls or something. How did you become so serious about music so so early in life? Uh, I guess I became serious about music. Uh, originally, it was it was I just wanted to have some music. I had music that I had written, and I wanted to document it. So I wanted to put it on a CD, and I didn't really know how to go about doing that. I met a guy who really liked it and believed in what I had to offer, you know, at such a young age. So uh, he said that, you know, I should have write a couple more songs, let's make a full album. And I did, and from there I realized that I had, you know, a little bit of talent where I could apply it and, and just try to keep going at it. And more records came, more dates came, and then it just grew from there. Awesome. Awesome. Now you have a, a band, you guys are really tight. Um, how did the band come together? I started as a solo musician, and then uh, it built to a, a trio, and, and from there uh, it built to a five-piece. A couple members came in and out, but uh, right now our, our bass player, I've been friends with since the fourth grade, keyboard player, um, I met uh, through a concert we played, and uh, we were looking for keyboard players at the time, so she came up and said, hey, I play the keys, and we auditioned her, and uh, you know, loved her sound, and uh, well, she came into the band. I think she was 16 at the time too. She was pretty young. And uh, our guitar player now had been filling in for us for the past two years. And uh, once our other guitar player left, it just made more sense for uh, Mike to kind of come into the role and uh, start playing guitar full time. And uh, our drummer is actually from from Italy. He went to school. Uh, music school, a collective music school in Manhattan with our bass player. So we're looking for a new drummer at the time. And uh, uh, Brian, our bass player, suggested Davi Day to play drums, and uh, he tried out for us. And we just love the sound. He's been playing with us for the past couple of months. Awesome, cool. How um, you, you have this new album coming out? Um, it's only change. Uh, just came out yesterday. It's on uh, available on iTunes. Um. How, how did you, uh, um, I should say, you, you, have, as, oh, you have all very good musicians, how did you collaborate, how do you collaborate to craft a, a new, you know, new songs for the new album? Is it, is it like, you write the songs, or is it, a, is it a band collaboration, or how does that work? Uh, I think it, it, it always kind of starts with me, but um, a lot of times I do collaborations with all different artists, whether it's uh, the people in my band, or it's uh, just other friends, musicians, friends of mine that I um, you know, happen to know and say, hey, you want to write a song? So it kind of comes from all over, including uh, the producer. I, I did a little collaboration with the producer, Ken Kuna, who was in the bands, uh, Wilco and Uncle Tubelo, uh, back in the day. And, and uh, so I wrote some music with him. So it really just comes from all over. You know, it, it normally stems from me. Um, but uh, I do a lot of collaborations. And this past album, um, I did uh, a lot more collaborations in the band that I've ever done before, and also a lot more just completely 100% me uh, songs as well. So it was a bit of everything. Yeah, I saw that you had Jerry Rowe from Katie Lang's band and David Le Le Brewer, yeah. David Le Brewer, yeah. <laughs> Le Brewer John uh, from John Mayer, yep. and uh, Aubrey Freed from the Black Crows and Cheryl, and Cheryl Crow's band. And uh, how was how was that to work with some of those musicians that have been, you know, on the road for so many years, been doing this for so long? And and what did you get from them? What could you, you know, what were the lessons you learned from them? I guess. Uh, it was a pretty humbling experience, um, you know, working with such incredible and, and notable uh, musicians that, uh, you know, I've been touring around the world before and have done all these crazy things. Uh, to play alongside of them was definitely a humbling experience. Yeah, well, um, to work with, you know, these musicians uh, that have done such 
awesome things, you know, and tour all, all around the world and play with, um, you know, great musicians like John Mayer and, and uh, uh, the Black Crows and Cheryl Crow. It's, it's uh, a very humbling experience, you know. Um, I learned a lot from them, from playing alongside from them and to see what they can do. And it's just amazing because they'll just walk into a room and immediately know what to do. They'll hear the song down once and you put a chord chart in front of them and, and uh, they immediately just know, depending on what the sound is, exactly how to execute it. And uh, that was cool for me, you know, and it's just great to see that people can, can just do something like that. It's unbelievable. Hmm. You've placed a bunch of songs in commercials. Um, does that affect how you write a song? Do you think about its commercial appeal? The song just happens to fit into something and it's a no thought given. I think it's just more about writing the song first. And, uh, you know, if people like it later or feel like it's uh, commercially appealing, then that's up to them. But I think the song definitely comes first. And uh, if it works out, it works out. Cool. Um, you've had some life changing experiences that went into the making of this album. Uh, and you've stated that you were able to mesh all of your influences into one complete piece of work finally for the first time in your career. Is it fair to say that this is the first real peek into who you really are as a musician? I think so. I think, uh, yeah, it's, it's, like, it's, like you said, it's, it's really the first time that I've created an album that is more of a story rather than just a bunch of songs that are placed into, into an album together. And, um, I think a lot of things that are going through in my life at that time made it more possible and more interesting to, to be able to create an album that feels like a whole, a constant theme of the theme of change. You know, the album is called the Song of Change. So, yeah. Yeah, I think that when people can connect to it on a, on a more emotional level, it, it seems like that's you know that that's really what it comes down to. So you can hear a good pop song or a, or a good song, and okay, that's a nice song. But when you can actually connect to it on an emotional level of hey, I've been through something like that, or or, or what have you, um, that people really take it more to heart and they'll listen to that song over and over again whenever that situation comes up or something of that nature. So that's pretty cool. It's something that you know people are going to be going back to. Yeah, I think that was uh, the cool thing about this album too, is because it started with just me. And, uh, you know, and all these things that I was going through, but the way that I wrote it was in a way that it could be general for, for people that were listening, could help them go through the change, you know, so, yeah, whatever cool. they're going through at that time. Awesome. Um, so you have a month-long tour coming up, uh, all over the country almost. Uh, are you excited? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Love, Silly question. Softball road. question. Yeah. Yeah, no, no doubt. I love being on, on the road and, and touring. Uh, it's, it's cool to wake up in a new place every morning and uh, to meet new people and to, to play. Is, is that your favorite part about being on the road? Uh, probably just meeting new people, you know, and, and getting to hang out in new cities and just moving on to the next place. You know? I've always loved traveling before becoming, uh, you know, a touring musician. So to be able to tour and to do what I love and to see the pieces is pretty cool. Really cool. Cool. All right, last question. Um, this is the one I asked all my interviewees. Uh, what's something about yourself that you'd like your fans to know that most don't know? Is there something that you have, uh, some hidden talent or uh, something that people don't really know? Um, I guess it's not, not everybody knows, but uh, I'm big into like outdoor type of things. You know, I love uh, spending time up in the uh, I got a house up there. My family does. Uh, I love you know, hiking and, and uh, spending a lot of time outdoors. I surf a lot and skateboard and snowboard and do, like to do extreme type sports, I guess you could say. I was never really good at regular sports, so sticking to the extreme type of sports is, is a big hobby of mine that I do quite often. Awesome. Cool. Well, this has been Quincy Mumford of Quincy Mumford and the Reason Why for ConceptBlogger.com. And uh, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. And uh, we look forward to seeing you out there on the road this month and, uh, and then into the future. Cool. Thanks a lot. Thank you. All right.